What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell, coming to you with a commentary of all things newsworthy and relevant for the week of July the 13th. First off, we have President Barack Obama's visit to address convention goers in Philadelphia at the NAACP convention and to talk with nonviolent offenders at El Reno Correctional Facility in El Reno, Oklahoma, becoming the first president to speak from a prison and address prisoners during his tenure. Well, we like to say uh, that this was long overdue. Uh, it is very relevant, and we've talked to about this before on What's Up Kansas City. Prison justice, prison reform rather, and criminal justice reform are issues that need our attention. So we do applaud President Obama. Uh, let me read to you these statistics. Close to one in every 12 black men ages 25 to 34 are in prison compared with one in 60 non-black men in that same age group. Every year, what's up Kansas City, we spend $80 billion to keep folks incarcerated. That's more than the values of every NFL, Major League Baseball, NBA, and National Hockey League team combined. More than 2.2 million Americans are currently behind bars. State and federal prison population is seven times more than it was 40 years ago. But why stop making, uh, why stop at just making a correct address? Plus, should not stop there. I like to think that I live in a safe neighborhood made that way, not by harassment from police, not by racial profiling. I like to think that prisoners will return to our society, not hardened criminals, not even uh, caring less that they did when they first went in, leaving empty-handed with few options to turn to other than committing more crimes and entering the criminal justice cycle all over again. I like to think that my college degree uh, insulates me and uh, gives me some protection against harassment from local police agencies and that I will be able to find a upward mobility middle class salary job by my early 20s. But as we have seen too often, even in this last week, that is not the case. Uh, take, for instance, the case of Ms. Sandra Bland, who is a 28-year-old 20 year social outreach worker on her campus, alma mater, historically black, Prairie View A&M, who re reportedly police pulled over last Friday because she made an improper signal, signaling a lane change. Uh, she was roughed up and later died in police custody. Needless, senseless, and tragic. And also, as we have seen uh, in the recent cases of Eric Gardner, Michael Brown, and in recent weeks, too numerous to count, a case that we will be talking about in weeks to come. The title of the theme for this year's NAACP convention was Pursuing Liberty in the Face of Injustice. President Obama's address and remarks at the prison got applause and mostly positive feedback from reporters. Janelle Ross with the Washington Post wrote, The black president some worried about has arrived, but I'd like to ask you what's up Kansas City, who has arrived with him? The president's new statement about grace may have been a little patronizing, smoking marijuana and getting into normal suburban class mischief is still a long way off from the minister society and bonfire the vanity like social environments and activities that our youth are getting into that get them involved in our criminal justice system that lead to disproportionate, nonviolent, and violent crime offender sentences. Camilla Harris, Attorney General of California and a criminal justice reform advocate has stated the American dream belongs to all of us. Why should, be a minor, why should being a minority in any neighborhood automatically put a disclaimer on this statement? A disclaimer that says, not for you. The reality is we can't use brutal police tactics and over-policing as an excuse to make rules harder for those who due to geographic, racial, and economic outliers, uh, uh, excuse me, due to geographic, racial, and economic hardships are outliers. Uh, for those to reach the American dream, while conversely making the rules easier for those who live in nicer areas, are in the majority, and have money to maintain their status quo. Making the rules harder for one group to achieve the American dream, while making the rules easier for those who have already arrived and are enjoying their comforts selfishly 
to stay there. I applaud President Obama and his bipartisan co-signers of business leaders and politicians, don't get me wrong, but it's going to take a serious recross examination to not only talk about the solutions, but to get to the activities and implement necessary reforms across the board. For local news, minimum wage debate. On Thursday, the Kansas City Council voted 12 to 1 to pass minimum wage ordinance that on August the 24th will raise the current minimum wage of $7.65 to $8.50 an hour and by 2020 that minimum wage goes up to $13 per hour. Now opponents of this argued that they wanted $15 an hour, which I would argue that by 2020 is not going to necessarily be keeping up with the standard of a livable wage. Proponents argue that it's a victory for social justice and economic equity. Bravo. While Mayor Sly James acknowledged that this law needs to be studied, uh, it's full with pitfalls and problems, uh, and that there are constituents on both sides that are having a hard time with this issue, he said that he's sympathetic both to business owners and to low wage owner, low wage earners. I was. Uh, I would uh, suggest that we uh, do a, a little more research and a little more education outreach. Uh, we need to go back to our business schools and revamp the model that says it's okay for me as a business owner to invest all of my earnings in a particular part of the equation, but not invest my earnings my uh, with uh, among my low wage earners. That equation needs to change. Now I'm not an MBA student but I will be the first person to attend those classes. Stay tuned. Now for your Facebook post, Mr. Larry Coleman of Kansas City, Missouri says those of us born in the 40s and 50s have witnessed some fairly remarkable things and he ranked them. Now I took out some of those because Obviously, I wasn't born in the 40s and 50s, but this particular Facebook status, um, some things that I have witnessed and uh, some fairly remarkable things for the 80s and 90s and the new millennium. We have, of course, the election of our first black president. We have the birth of the Internet, devotion to technology devices that makes life easier and more entertaining, 24-hour news cycle. I know you can remember when the Pledge of Allegiance, the flag would come on and it would fade to static. That's no longer the case. We have the removal of the Confederate flag on the steps of the South Carolina state capitol. Gay marriage is being recognized and homosexuality has been approved by law. And we have improved scientific technology to where we have DNA sequencing. So those are some of my important things that have happened during my lifetime. What are some of yours? I encourage you to get online, connect with us, Facebook, What's Up Kansas City. Our webpage is www.whatsupkansascity.net. Befriend us, Glenn Bryan, on Facebook. And remember, the sky is the limit. Aim high, shoot for the moon. If you miss it, at the very least, you would have landed among the stars. Take care until next time. CMG wants you to always remember the victory we call success goes to the best prepared. When you invest in your community, you're really just investing in yourself.